Tim Pool is a fraud. I'm pretty sure you've seen the interview where Kanye walks off. If you haven't, I'm not going to play it here because A, um, it's been played to death anyway, and B, if you are that far out of like the culture, etc., um, then I admire you. <laughs> uh, so I'll just explain the situation. Um, Kanye West, or Ye, as he is now being referred to, um, is running an anti-Semitic presidential campaign. Um, and he bought Parler in order to make sure that if he got censored elsewhere, he would have a centralized platform to use. Anybody who has seen my content for a while knows, though, that Parler is a fucking garbage fire. Um, and shouldn't be used by anybody serious about any form of activism. But here we are, it being used. Um, and the general, like, gist of his campaign has been to go DEFCON 3 on Jews. Now, those of you who have been following me for a while uh, now uh, probably uh, know at least a little bit about this, like, end of culture. But um, if you don't, basically Kanye consistently agitates and consistently tries to do shit, um, you know, counterculturally. Uh, like he he did he did a full ass fucking song about Chick Fil A. Holy shit! He got millions of people to bop their head to a rap song about Chick Fil A. Chicken sandwich restaurant. I mean, it's not that he's a genius. It's that people are fucking stupid. Because it was on a worship album, and the whole point of the song is that it's closed on Sunday, so it's more godlike to eat at Chick fil A than other chicken restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, um, his connections with all these major fashion industry people, um, Balenciaga, Adidas, um, Nike, all of them, and his labels and his bank, and all of this would eventually. Shoop, because, you know, he's an anti-Semite now, or has been for a long time, and is now just going public with it. So basically, um, he was already in bed with a bunch of fundamentally unethical people. Like, <laughs> these, these, these people are not ethical, and Adidas stopping making Yeezys? So what? You know? Balenciaga, we now know more about them, and I'll be putting out content on that soon as well, even though that's pretty much been done into the dirt as well. I don't know, it's been a busy week. It's uh, It's been a busy week for me. I've been trying to get a bunch of shit off the ground, and, you know, because I'm bipolar, like Kanye, um, I've got uh, the same tendencies to really sink into certain projects and then fuck off the rest. So I need to get better about that for sure, and I will be. Ultimately, the whole Kanye West situation is pretty laughable when you realize that he was affiliated with Balenciaga because holy shit, all the stuff that came out about them recently, holy shit. So, um, this is the way the fashion industry is and has been. This is the way the industry with, with which he worked has been. And he still put out fucking God music. And then eventually got them to cancel their own contracts with him. Um, and then claimed that he did it to be free, right? Well, no, because then he continued to go on and spout anti-Semitic shit. Because it was never about irony. It was never about, you know, pulling some stunt. He's just anti-Semitic now. So, with all that in mind, I know that because I've done the research and because um, I've, like, actually looked into this situation and all these businesses and shit, and that's why I would never consider having Kanye West on my channel now. Because you know what he would want to talk about? Jews! Wow! Who has surprised Pikachu now that they invited somebody pushing anti-Semitic shit in public on their show, 
and he talked about Jews. Oh, right. Tim Pool. Tim Pool had him on, and what did he expect? That Kanye West needed that interview? That Kanye West wanted to push uh, like some sort of milk toast version of what he was saying in that interview? <laughs> Good fucking luck. Um, it should have been clear. It should have been obvious that Kanye wasn't there for that and that he was there to push his anti-Jew shit. So Tim Poole invited on a known anti-Semite. And then when Kanye started to spew his anti-Semitic stuff, along with Milo Yiannopoulos, who has justified pedophilia in the past, who has justified fascism and a bunch of other fucking conservative garbage in the past, along with Nick white supremacist Fuentes, who regularly denies the Holocaust. Why the fuck did he do this if he didn't expect them to fucking talk about that? Well, because he did. He knew exactly what they would say, and he knew that if they didn't get what they wanted and it went poorly, he could still virtue signal about it. He could say, I made Tim, I made Kanye West walk off. <laughs> and I made Nick Fuentes and Milo Yiannopoulos leave with him. <laughs> you shouldn't have had him on to begin with, you fucking hack. You know, but he's willing to do anything for that name recognition. Because his name is in his podcast. I find a lot of these people who have their name in their podcast, subscribe to Jeremiah Talks, by the way, um, just want their name next to somebody else's name. That he said, oh, I can have the Yay interview. And I can have Milo and Nick on at the same time so that we can have a nice little conservative circle jerk. Because Tim Pool is a conservative. And that's why he works with all these conservatives. And Tim Pool is a fascist sympathizer, which is why he's totally okay with having on fascist sympathizers. But the white supremacy and anti-Jew stuff was a little too far, Tim? Nah. You're either a coward for not standing behind your beliefs, or you're a fraud for having somebody on you knew was going to say these things which you find abhorrent, and you had him on anyway. And then you were just like surprised Pikachu about it when he said that he wanted to talk against Jews. Like, fuck you, Tim. Your receding hairline does nothing for anyone. And, and your beanie is like a very good metaphor for all that you do. It's just running cover for your garbage. Okay? Like, holy shit. And so we had, this goes into what I said in my previous video. Um, if you're going to have somebody on your stream, know them well enough and respect them well enough to know that they're going to say something which you would be fine airing or give them the respect to be able to say their piece or don't have them on. Because, let's say, I just pushed anarchy or insurrection or something on Tim Pool, and he started to say, well, I don't think we should have one of those, and started to hem, ha, hem, and, like, <laughs> I would walk off, too. I already got my numbers, bitch. That's all I needed. So now the entire internet gets to clamor for this and uh, pretend that they, they're on Team Tim Pool now. Fucking Philly D playing a Tim Pool uh, interview segment when he would normally call Tim Pool a fast sympathizer and being like, oh, you were so brave. You were so brave and you made him walk away. <laughs> Holy shit. Bravery would be either sticking to your guns and not taking the interview to begin with. Having the controversial content on your show because it's what you fucking ordered. Or... Just being of strong enough will 
to be like, yeah, no, don't pull that Nazi shit on my show. Say it with your chest. Don't be like, um, uh, and stutter like you did. And then have Luke Radowski on to be like the B-boy for the whole ordeal. Like, why? Why should anybody watch that content? They were there for Yay, not you. Or they were there for Milo Yiannopoulos or Nick Fuentes. Maybe people should be more careful about who the fuck they platform. And I'm talking to you too, Alex Jones. But Alex Jones was bolder about it. He was bolder about it. And that's why Kanye stuck around on Alex Jones's show and not your show, Tim. Because he was bolder about it and he said, I don't fucking like Nazis. You know, fuck Nazis, they're, they're scum. Right? But Tim Pool didn't. Because Tim Pool is a fraud. And he cares about numbers and appearing good more than he cares about facts, reason, anything like that. More than he cares about having an ethical backbone. That's why he's totally okay with palling around with doxers like fucking Ian Miles Chong. Like swatters, sorry. Like Ian Miles Chong. Or or having, you know, practical like content nobodies like redheaded libertarian on his show, Jocelyn Glaybach, who hates it when her name is used, even though she put it on her own human events articles. You know, he'll have on anyone who can increase his audience size. It's selling out. It's being a hack. It's not standing behind your content and not being respectful enough of your guests to invite people who matter and then acknowledge that they matter. You disrespected him. Of course he's going to walk away. I don't like him. Like, fuck Kanye West, fuck Nazis, fuck Nick Fuentes, and fuck Milo Yiannopoulos, even though the latter would probably want that and then later uh, <laughs> smear you in public for even uh, daring to propose the act, um, because that's what he is. He's a lying hack as well. Oh, no, no, being gay was a phase. It wasn't a phase. You're gay, Milo. There's nothing wrong with being gay. But you're gay. Okay? So, having all these people on who are just going to parrot conservative talking points. Yeah. Having all these people on who are going to toe this line and then being on Milo's list for who Kanye should do a stream with, and then just, like, being surprised Pikachu when he fucking walks off? It should be no surprise. And authentically, I don't think it was one. I think you're a hack. I think Tim Pool wanted a specific reaction. He wanted Kanye to dumb his stuff down so that Tim Pool could have it on TimCast so that he could platform a Nazi and then walk off into the sunset with all the views. Because all he did was imply his Nazism. He didn't outright say his Nazism. It's such fucking mealy-mouthed cowardice. And it's the kind of cowardice that platforms this shit regularly. Stand up. Say it with your chest. Be boldly anti-fascists. And fuck the fash. Okay? Or don't. And don't be surprised when people say that you're a fact sympathizer because you have on Nazis spewing Nazism. Holy shit. So, yeah, I thought I would speak my piece on that and maybe give an alternate perspective because from my anarchist perspective, Tim Pool got exactly what he fucking deserved. He got his guest to walk away, his biggest guest ever, because he didn't respect his guest enough to know what the guest was going to say, or he didn't respect his guest enough to let them say what they were going to say. And I really think it's the latter. He knew exactly what he was getting, and that's what he ordered. And then he said, oh, but, but, but I know I ordered it, and I know this is on the receipt, and I know, I know this is... But I didn't really want the Chick-fil-A then you shouldn't have gone in the fucking store. So, have principles. 
stand up for those principles, and smash the fucking state.